Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. It's another game, another late Scott McTominay winner for Manchester United as he delivers the three points against Aston Villa. Arsenal lay the hammer down on West Ham with a 6-0 win in East London and strengthened their claim to the title. Erlen Haaland returns to the starting eleven for Manchester City and gets back to the scoring ways with a brace against Everton and Liverpool overcome a sluggish first half against Burnley and bounce back to a 3-1 win at Anfield. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. OK, mate, let's go to... I start at Villa Park, the game today. Mm. Uh, Unai Emery called it a Champions League playoff game with, you know, fourth place guaranteed a, a Champions League spot. Possible fifth uh, place could get one this year, but you can't sort of rely on that. So it was... It was an interesting game for both teams. Villa not quite been at the best with poor midweek against mm. Chelsea. Manchester United come off a good win against West Ham, starting to feel like it's coming together. Did this play out like you thought, Rob? Or were, were, were United any better or worse than, than you, you might have thought? I think it probably played out like I thought it was going to mm. play out. I thought the, most, the, the, the best chance would have been for a draw. And it looked like it was going to be yeah. a draw. And then, of course, Manchester United get the winning goal with Scott McTominay as well. I, I think... I think Given we weren't quite sure how Villa were going to go yeah. because we both watched the game on Wednesday mm. and I couldn't have been more disappointed with Aston Villa against Chelsea. It, like them, did it? it was incredible. It just didn't look like them at Villa Park. And I'm thinking if they show up like that, they're going to lose the game. Well, they didn't show up like that. They no, still lost. No. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we'll get into whether they deserve to lose or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But it was Aston Villa that we've enjoyed this season, Rob. Yeah. The intensity, the football, some of the play through midfield that Man United struggled to, to keep hold of. And, and created, we have the, we have the stats after the yeah. game and all the stats, and I know it's not about the stats, it's about the stat at the top, the goals, yeah. but Villa created a lot. They created a lot. Another day, I think they would have scored three or four goals, some of the chances. Andre Anana had a really good game. Um, and you can see when that second goal went in from Scott McTominay, yeah. Unai Emery, Rob, yeah. Yeah. devastated, oh, yeah. really devastated yeah. because I think he, he thought they could go on and win the game at 1-1. Yeah. They had another, Louise had another chance, Douglas Louise, didn't yeah. he? He didn't really Four get scores. with his, yeah, with his left foot. Contact. I, I, I really enjoyed the game. Mm. I thought Villa were really good. Um, yeah. It's just a couple of moments mm. from Manchester United. And again, um, Eric Ten Hobbs made good subs. Yeah. And McTominay, that's four goals of his four seven. Goals off, off the bench. Off the bench. Mm. Um, and, you know, the, the, the result against, um, who was it last weekend? Against West Ham United, West, West Ham, they beat West Ham three Yeah, really, yeah. really expansive, yeah. really yeah, good. good football. Really, yeah. This was very different, and mm. they were forced to play in a different way. Yeah, which is good when you can mm. win games Absolutely. in different ways, front yeah. foot or playing on the counter, which they did mm. today. That's a good sign. Yeah, I, I, I'm of that thinking. And, and listen, when criticism is, is right, I think we'll criticise. I think today is a little bit more about the detail and the way the game went for Manchester United. But I always remember. Maybe a month or so ago, you talked about Ten Hag and said, you know, when Klopp went in at Liverpool, it was about progression, mm. but making sure that the club's moving forward. Now, I always think it's, it, it's the environment around a football club, Rob, whether it's the training ground, the dressing room, the coach going home. If you've won, it feels a lot better. And Manchester United have won. So that's the first thing. It's three points, close the gap on, on Villa and Spurs, and they give themselves a chance of a Champions League spot right now as things stand. But... I think the, the takeaway would be also, as a coach and as a, uh, somebody who would read the game like Ten Hag, is that Aston Villa, you're right, had 23 shots, 10 of those on target. Mm, now, on lot. another day, that's a lot of shots to be conceding on target. And Anna had a good day. There were some good yeah. defensive performances. I thought, I thought Harry Maguire w w was in good places and defended when he had to. Darlow had, had a good game. Good game yeah. But what, what's happening with Manchester United is they're not controlling games enough and managing the opposition so th those chances. Now, that's a better team maybe than Villa, yeah. a more yeah. informed Aston Villa. Villa scored three goals today. Now, and, and you lose 3-1 or 3-2. So that's a progression. But well done, Terry, Ten, uh, Eric Ten Hag, for the sub. Well done for the win. Now are you going to make sure you're doing the work in the week so that they get better in the game management? And, and defensive side of it. So we're yeah. talking defensive side. Mm -hmm. So even, so they're attacking play. Yeah. I think we enjoy that. They're and they're good, really, yeah. really good. But when they... If they're forced to play on a counter, yeah. they've got to be stronger defensively. Mm. Just a couple of players, Rob, and, and it wasn't great. It wasn't that uh, Bruno Fernandez. Yeah, I, a couple you, yeah. of defensive mm. moments where he's coming back and, and making clearances and making interceptions and yeah. making blocks and fist pumping everybody else. I love to see that yeah, from the yeah. talented players. And 
and and that has been better of Manchester United. Yeah. I, I like to see a little bit more of it from from Marcus Rashford in particular. Yeah. But I think in general they're trying to protect more that back four. Lissandro Martinez being out injured yeah. is such a blow because I mm. think he's a really good defender w that would have made a difference today. Correct. They won yeah. the game, by the yeah. way, mm. but they wouldn't have. I don't think the numbers of shots on target would have been the same with, with him, him involved. Yeah. Um, I, just going back to your progression, Rob. Now the players are fit again, most of them for United. Only Mason Mount, really, that's, that yeah. you might and, consider and to enhance. Martinez now, obviously. And Lisandro Martinez, yeah. yeah, of course. Um, it was really important that, that we go back to the progression argument. Yeah. And when he's got a ton of injuries, Okay, you know, he gets a little bit of a pass on that and it hasn't been great. Yeah. But now between now and the end of the season, do, do you think we're going to see this, Rob? Is Man United going to become more durable? Is he going to do the yeah. work on the training ground to, mm. look, to make them look more tight? Correct. More tight yeah. defensively because yeah. counter-attacking teams yeah. have to look strong, yeah. really strong at the and, back. And, and, and they didn't at times today, and they no. got away with it. It was bad yeah. finishing, it was bad decision making at times, not you know good goalkeeping and on. I thought I'd, I'd a game look sharp. But you're right, and, and that is the question, and, and that will be, you know, and, and we talked on, on, on the, uh, the goal zone after the game where, you know, there's a lot of change happening in this football club, and everything's being scrutinised, including the head coach's role. Yeah. He's in pole position. If there's development, Rob, if he's doing that work, if we start to see a progression, sit, yeah. he's in pole position. Yeah. It's his shirt to, 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 to lose. Do you think that if we don't see that as good as we both want to see it, He's under that much danger. If they I, finish fifth, for example, right? Look at the league table now, they're sixth. Fifth, but if we got in Champions League, I think he'd be okay. Fifth, depending how far they are, we'd be okay. What I think we need to have, Robin, and it's, I think it's like five games now unbeaten all competition, for, uh, three straight Premier League wins, yeah. and, and sort of, you know, not bad numbers. Not bad numbers, but Man City's go 15, 20 games. Liverpool yeah. go right. 15. Manchester United have to start to get to 10, 12 games unbeaten. Yeah. So we see some consistency. So on not great days, they get a draw and yeah. we come back. And on good days, we win. But not, not the kind of win a game, draw a game, lose a game. Mm. I don't think that mm. is going to be enough to kind of mm. well, maybe that, that, well, that's, job. that's what we've got to see eradicated. Yeah. My first top note on this game going into the game in terms of my, my prep notes was no more Jekyll and Hyde. Mm. They must find consistency. Yeah. Now, today's a win. Mm. So... I almost feel like that's better. Yeah, yeah. With the with the it, with the knowledge that. Ugh. Can, I, can let me chuck one at you then, from from like a coaching head coach point of view, a win today and and maybe today is not quite the example, but a win when lots of things haven't gone well, but you've won, or a day when you're a little unlucky, you've controlled more of the game and you end up drawing or losing. It, with this group of players, is not is winning more important than the other things? It's a good question. It's a good question, and I, I almost want to say I want to see the football. Now I know. You listen, think the that wins, seems crazy. You think the wins will come after? Yeah, I do. Like, for me, it's more important to see the development on the football side. So better control, better more control, possession, more possession, more of what unified team ever yeah, dropping or pushing, and yeah. I want to see a higher line. Yeah. quite honestly, yeah. a higher line means the team's more compact. compact yeah. It's going to get them on the front foot a lot, yeah. lot better. They can control possession a little bit more and force teams back. That's hard to do at Villa Park with yeah. this current Aston Villa side, but I'd see that. And listen, it's tough to say. It's, it's, it's always tough to argue against results, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. And, yeah. I, and I'm so of it's course a bit very of a careful balance to do probably, that. It? it is, yeah. but. But it would be important for me, for me as yeah. a as a as a analyst of it, or if I if I was a Man United fan, yeah. I want to see football in, improving as well. Mm. And I think we said it at the last couple of podcasts, Rob. I think we've seen that a little yeah. bit yeah. with Garnacho, mm. with Bruno, with Marcus Rashford, yeah. with Rasmus Hoyland. I'm I'm starting to see good, that it? looks pretty good. Yeah, Garnacho's. Yeah. So talent, I think yeah. right now, Rob, we can sit here. I think we're agreed. Better, mm -hmm. like the way the, yeah. the, the attack is. Like Maynou's continued involvement in the team. Absolutely. Um, Dallo, I, I think Diogo Dallo for me deserves a mention. Mm. Not just the cross in today. There's a couple of times that we looked at each other yeah. and we made blocks and slide tackles. Well Committed done, like it. well yeah. done yeah. defensively. So yeah. they're they're on the right path, but mm. let's just wait over the next few weeks. Can they can they grow on it, build on it, and become a, a consistent team? Yeah, just a little worry. Luke Shaw again picks up a niggle and, and yeah. thing. I'd just like to see him. You know, play a, a run of games because only because he's such a good player and so so important to them, Rob. Do you want to have a quick let's line turn on it? Villa. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's turn on. it on, on, on Villa because obviously really poor uh, in the uh, FA Cup this week, and then 
I just thought we won't get two, two of those performances in Unai Emi team. It's just as now he works. I thought they were better. I thought at times there, you could see that they, they, they work the ball, get into midfield, into McGinn, into Ramsey, they get turned. Really down good. that left-hand side, it was good. Moreno really good. coming in, Watkins yep. down that side. I mean, better finishing Watkins has two or three yep. today. Yep. Um, so in, in terms of like the opposite side, they yeah. lost, but some of their football was, was really, really good. good, wasn't it? Yeah. And whether they can just lost a little, little bit of sparkle at the top end of the pitch, if they can find that again, Rob, the, the football's still there and everything else is not too far away. It's not too far away, Rob. Come, they're, they're fifth place, by the yeah. way. They're yeah, fifth place in the Premier yeah. League. They played a performance like today. I'm sure the fans appreciated the way they played today. Listen, we all no, no, nobody wants to lose at mm. home. And I, and I hope the manager appreciated the performance level. I'm sure he would have done. And, and, and they should be praised for how they played. Yeah, yeah. They stretched Man United mm. so many times, particularly through, they played through United's midfield mm. many, many times. And McGinn in there, uh, I thought Ramsey was yeah. really, really good. Jacob Ramsey playing in that spot as well. Bailey was lively early on. Uh, it, it, it looks good. Mm. It looks good. So I know Villa fans will be disappointed, but... All our stats, they, yeah. they were pretty good stats. Yeah. Expected yeah. goals, everything. They were kind of ahead of Manchester United. Um, and another day, they could have scored yeah. more and maybe got the victory. But, but yeah, Villa is still, still, there, still a good, it's a good still, story. still in for a Champions League. Absolutely but, I mean, European right. football, a game will, will be brilliant for them. And what are they now, Rob? They're Europa. still six points ahead, aren't they? Have I got the right table here? They're six points ahead of Manchester. Six, six, no, 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 five points five ahead. Five points ahead and uh, Spurs are six points ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, you're still, you know, that's still a few points to turn around. Yeah. So, uh, not a bad day for Villa. Well, good yeah. win for Manchester yeah, yeah, United well and, and yep. Scott McTominay with the late winner. London Stadium, my friend. West Ham United beat Arsenal twice this season in the league and then in the cool. Cup. Um, they didn't beat them today, mate. <sighs> I mean, Arsenal... I mean, we were watching the game, weren't we? And, and 20, 25 minutes in, we're going, oh, interesting. Arsenal's shape and, and yeah. the, 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 the positional play was, was really interesting. We're saying, OK, this it's is different. different. It's different, yeah. See how this works. And then all of a sudden... They clipped in against set pieces, and we'll talk about those a little bit over yeah. the course of the weekend. Yeah. So important to this Arsenal team. They get some of the first goal, Rob, and then the moment they get the first goal, they're off. They're in another gear. Oh. And West Ham were not even second best, third, fourth, fifth Blown best. No answers. Yeah. No answers, which it got a little bit embarrassing towards the end. But the football that Arsenal played, I, I, that, I mean, my favourite game of the weekend. I know it's a, it's a stunning headline of being six 0 London derby. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed that today, Rob. Because remember the first five or ten minutes. Yeah. I, we were having a little like flipping egg. Where's, where's the? Where? Because we expected to have it up front. Correct. We expected, you know, the, the last game against Liverpool. Mm. It, it was Liverpool three, three yeah. one victory, wasn't yeah. it, on Sunday? Was so different. Very different. Look, Jorginho next to oh, Rice. Very different. Odegaard. Odegaard in there, didn't have and it. And, it was like. Yeah. It was like Liverpool-type yeah, football. Yeah, high, high pressure, brilliant, brilliant. And to go totally away from that today mm -hmm. in a different system with Trossard as a false nine yeah. and has and has our, um, have have it, us back into yeah, midfield. Into midfield. And, and, and Arsenal, Odegaard going up to start a press. Yeah, so when press, they don't have the ball, yeah. Odegaard goes up yeah. and it's like a 4-4-2 without the ball. And with possession, Arsenal, mm -hmm. they're into this 4-3-3. Three, yeah. And the first five or ten minutes, Rob, because the ball changed hands a lot, Correct. we're like, what, Ooh, where who's are where? they? Where, yeah. where, where, who's? So it got a little confusing. The game settled down. Absolutely. And I just thought it was a, it was a, an exhibition of really high-level modern coaching mm. on football yeah. and angles and possession and combinations and outnumbering and false nine in Trussard coming 30 yards back to find space in midfield to yeah. get turned to knit things together. Can you imagine if, you, if, if it was me or you in midfield? But, but I want to stop you there. Oh. I want to stop you there before you go about you and I, because you and I, it'd be 20 years ago now playing <laughs> Premier League football. <laughs> it doesn't seem that. Let's talk about, you've just hit a point oh. that I thought is really important. Was it new football versus old football? Was it new football that yeah. what he was doing and it you was. say the overnumbering that against old football where we're set solid, yeah. this is our shape. Oh, actually, in that in that shape, they were getting pulled yeah. all over the place. Yeah, it was great, great question, and it is. It's new, tactical, cool, trendy coaching against now I'm, listen, yeah, I want finish, to finish yeah. off saying yeah, that the old the, we say old football, mm. the structured pragmatic yeah. football. That's mm. not dead. Mm. And we've seen West Ham United do great things and yeah. win games against all yeah. the big, a lot of the big sides they've already beat this year, Rob. Mm. So it's not dead. But today, it was new, new, fluid and creative and, I don't know, it was bright coaching yeah. Yeah. that picked apart. And by the yeah. way, before the game with Ward, Prowse, Suchek and, and Edson Alvarez, mm. I'm thinking, that's kind of strong in there for West yeah. Ham. Yeah, three. Yeah. Arsenal aren't going to find a way through the middle. They're going to have to probably go in the wider areas. I said yeah. it before the game. 
Wrong. Mm. Wrong. Because they still picked them apart yeah. with Trossard. Trossard um, made movements and made it outnumbered West Ham United. Yeah. And I'm going to continue and go as far as to say... Leandro Trossard was my under, is my underappreciated performer this weekend. You know I feel about you him. You love Trossard. I um, mean, if he gets a Valentine card off you on Tuesday... I think he's uh, a little diamond. And you know last season, Robbie Earl, when they were... When they yeah, were, in were a, struggling for they goals. Were in a, and, yeah, and he came in the side yeah. and he made a difference. And I think mm. I said to him, like, keep him in the side. Keep him in the team. Mm. Mikel Arteta, nine. and I get it, went back to his big signing, his mm. difference maker Jesus, for Man City yeah. and Gabriel Jesus. Mm. I would say it again. Now, listen, this is this is somebody that, that is not on the same level yeah. as Mikel Arteta, yeah. Robbie. Your job's not on the line and you're not, people yeah. won't criticise you if it goes And the next game, yeah. Arteta might see it yeah. totally differently mm -hmm. like he's seen the last two games and yeah. he might see something different. And Trossard might be on the bench. He might be back in the midfield. Mm -hmm. I just love it when Trossard plays up front, yeah, false nine, mm -hmm. and I think he's better than what people think in general. And, and, and maybe, just maybe a little underappreciated of Mikel Arteta in terms of how he stacks up against your habits and your yeah. big money guys in Jesus, yeah, that he's yeah. a little bit from Brighton. You know, we'll use you when we want you. I think he's better than that, Rob. Mm. I think he's better than that. And if you put him on a bigger pedestal, an expectation level, the, the goal, the, the sack of penalty was a great example of what that, the reason for the false nine. Yeah. He comes 20 yards away from the front line, deep into midfield, and what does that do? It makes the centre-backs for, yeah. for West Ham United. Yeah. Do Where's our striker? In, I, yeah. Where, and all of a sudden, before you know it, Saka and Martin they make a runs in behind. The ball comes over the top. Saka makes a run. It, it's really, really smart stuff. And everything it seemed that Arteta wanted out of the game from Arsenal tactically ended up being sweet as a nut. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I can't argue with Chossie. I don't know you got Chossie love, but I totally get it. Brings a different dimension. Disrupts the organisation. Two big centre-backs today. Everything. Zuma and Aguirre don't, don't know where they are. Got nobody to play against. Um, it is interesting. And, uh, and you made a point where we were talking, I think, just off after the game and said, and we talked about the set pieces that we'll go to. And we talked mm. about that, you know, Man City, and we'll get to them, have Erling mm. Haaland. So when things ain't going well or you need an option, you go to big man who gets you 16 Premier League goals. Arsenal haven't got that. They're going to have to do it in different ways. They're going to have to get, you know, Saka continues to be a little goal source on one yeah. side. Martinelli's back in form and looking a bit more threatening. Your Trossards, your Havertz, your Odegaard, your Rices are going to have to still, are all going to have to pitch in. Let me just jump in real quick. Go. And to be fair, right, to everybody out there listening, yeah. I have said... I don't think they can win it without, without a, a 20. Forward. Yeah. Right. That's mm. how strongly mm. that I, I certainly felt about, God, they're going to need, they need a, a real flipping top scorer. Anyway, back on Giuseppe pieces. Yes. Yeah, so, but their striker, their 16 goal man is set pieces. It's Nicolas Jovert who works on the training ground every week. Every time we watch Arsenal, there's a different set piece routine or, or a variation of set piece routine that works, that works, that get them chances of goal. So somebody taking a kick, and somebody being in the right place and a number of people who all know their roles is, is creating, has created 16 goals for Arsenal. That's more than any team in the league. I mean, the, the, the Ben White dark arts, he, he, he could have been captain of the Wimbledon team, Wimbledon team Ben White. <laughs> he's got the proper dark art of sneaking along the line, not looking like he knows what he's doing. Oh, I've just bumped into the goalkeeper. I didn't realise you were there. As Saliba comes in and heads the ball in. And Trossard's done that before, by the Trussell way. Trossard did it against so, Crystal so, Palace, so, against Joachim Anderson. Did so, it twice So, so Gabriel. Does, does your set-piece coach of Arsenal say, thanks, uh, yeah, Leandro? they might be looking for you. They might be looking for you. Yeah. Uh, ben, ben, come Benjamin. In. I've got a job for you. Yeah, correct. And he might rotate it around a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Know, everybody knows what they're doing, Rob. Everybody's can only... The, 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 the Arsenal, you did a great breakdown uh, with, with, our, with one of our guys in, in, in tape where Arsenal are ahead of the West Ham back foot. They, they, in offside. They're in, not for the in an offside position yeah, for the free waiting kick. for the free kick to come in. They've got a brilliant, and the timing of it's excellent, where they run back to be level to get onside yeah. and then attack the ball. And, and you did a great breakdown of Ben Johnson, a younger defender who probably is feeling uncomfortable that the Arsenal players are closer to goal. He panics, Rob. He goes back. He, he plays them all on. He shouldn't go, he back, shouldn't go back. And Gabriel gets the header. Yeah. Now, all that work from Arsenal yeah. is their 16-goal a season, man. That's where it wow. comes in different dimensions. And, and that's, that's very, very interesting, isn't it? Mm. If they can produce a, another goal scorer in set pieces, which mm. they're doing right now, that's amazing. It, it's, it's something to watch out for, mm. and I hope everybody listening and watching is going to look out for that. Right. Those little movements. It's working so much of the time. Yeah. 
And and I think, you know, it's what you might expect of a professional football nowadays, that they have specialists all, yeah. to take advantage of every little thing, advantage you can advantage. get. And set pieces is such a... It's boring, by the way. I mean, how many Fridays? To do Fridays, that work, I'm training. How many Fridays? Oh. But it's, it's obviously a, it's, it's a different level now, yeah, and yeah. it's probably digital. There's mm. probably videos or I, uh, iPads about where they are, it, and this yeah. is what you're doing this week, and, and graphical kind of presentations of their set pieces. But it's working, and for that we give credit to um, Mr. Nicola Jover. Jover, um, great day for, for for Arsenal and, and really good, what, impressive. Really West Ham United, Rob, just on the because mm. I wrote a note on my West Ham, and this was before the game. I said, mm. you know, we're, we're we're back in that period where if West Ham win, you know, great David Moyes. If West Ham lose, yeah, is it time for a change? A six 0 loss at home doesn't help the case for a West Ham, you know, more David Moyes. I think you made a point, and I'll let you make the point, yeah. where you don't feel yet it's the right time to, 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 to make any kind of no. changes with, no. with, with Moyes. And just explain, as okay. you did, why. Yeah, so his contract's up at the end of this season. Mm. For me, this is, this is how this is going to... This is how it would pan out for me. Yeah. I'd extend David Moyes. I'd give him a two-year contract, okay? okay? And I'd, I'd see where this David Moyes West Ham project continues uh, and, and, and whether it continues going in the same path. I think there'll be a natural end to David Moyes at West Ham United. There'll be a natural acceptance that, yeah, this is kind of it now. Every, you know what I mean? I think it'll be widely accepted. And you don't think that's now? No, I don't. Okay. Because there's because still... Because he's still done great things. He's, okay. sit, he's still, and they've had a, they've had a bad yeah, run. They're still be, sat eighth. Yeah, they the missed Pacatar the well, si They the missed Pacatar yeah. in the last 16 of the Europa League. Yeah. There's still, I want to see more from David Moyes. Mm -hmm. Now, why I say that as well is that West Ham, I know what West Ham fans want, right? Yeah. And that's expansive, yeah, uh, they open, wanna, attacking yeah, football. The next manager and the next managers of West Ham United is going to be that type of person. Because the current crop of managers, coaches doing good work mm. or up-and-coming coaches through lower leagues or international football is that style. Yeah. There isn't many David Moyes styles okay, left so, to come yeah. back. Okay. So my point is, let's see this out to the conclusion. Mm. And that might be six months, could be a year, could be 18 months, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because after that, you are going to get what you possibly so want. You, and there's you... no regrets that David Moyes was okay. let go too early. And, and are you in that time starting to look and think about who that guy might of be? Course. And And the other thing I'd have to say is, and you're pretty confident, I'm assuming, that he ain't going to take you down. We're not going to be bottom three well, with that, David that, Moyes. That's, that's right. And if, and if that starts, to, that's when the natural end comes, Rob. Right now, they're, yeah, they're fine. Yeah. They're obviously yeah. going to be great. A European Cup last year, maybe another European run. It's just too early, yeah? yeah. I don't want any regrets of West Ham fans when they get somebody else come in. That yeah, we, saw the, we saw this at, at Crystal Palace a little bit, didn't we? Yeah, Remember we saw when, it there. We when saw it West Hodgson Ham. came, up, came yeah. out and yeah. thing went in. So it? I think there'll be a. Na I think he's, he's earned the right to continue. Yeah. Yeah, Let's see where it goes with yeah, a little bit point. of a pragmatic style. Yeah. After that, things will mm. be. Because of the way the the go the trends are going in coaching. Good point. Um, let's go to the Etihad. Manchester City faced Everton. Uh, it was an Everton team that um, well set up a, a good success with clean sheets. Eight clean sheets mm. this season, most in the league against a Man City team that Phil Foden was was in great form. A City team that can score from anywhere. I have to say, for for 70, 70 minutes of the game, <laughs> Everton team were okay and were. Frustrating City a little bit. The football wasn't great. It wasn't quite as fluid as, as we've seen. A little mm. bit flat. Very flat. A little quiet at the ground. And it, kind of wondering, is it going to be one of those days? Yeah, we were. And, and um, sometimes, Rob, and I think we've played... Listen, we, we didn't play in teams as good as Manchester yeah. City, but yeah. we played in, in teams before where it is flat. Yeah, the stadium's a little happened, flat. Maybe yeah. they've had yeah. some good... You know what? And it's hard to get going again. Mm. Now, of course, the story of this game is the guy up front. They've got Erlen Haaland. Um... I mean, he's still t he's still joint top scorer going into this game. Yeah, uh, after he had missing, 14 goals. He missed nearly two, game, mo nearly two nearly months. months. Yeah. So the story was what it what it's like to have a a, a world class finishing striker mm. at your club. Mm. To it was it Jim Beglin kind of tidy up a scruffy performance with a victory, yeah. and that's what he gives you. You just talked about it there with Arsenal. Mm. Maybe you haven't got that guy. Maybe they can get that amount of goals and set pieces. But it was an Erlen Haaland um, story for me, Rob. Mm. And, and the first goal with the right foot finish. Yeah. Was a clean corner. as a whistle. The he's second one, he's foot. strong. He makes a it's a it's a, it's a typical uh, Erlen Haaland run with yeah. the assist pass from De Bruyne. Mm -hmm. Good finish, strong. 
and that's it. Yeah, job you know, done. There ain't a lot more to say, yeah. to say about the yeah. performance because they'll play better than that. Mm. And I always think when they haven't got Kevin De Bruyne and you haven't got somebody like Bernardo Silva, like your, a little your, bit. your little flary, technical, creative types, they sometimes can be a little lacking on that. Was Foden wider? And, and we saw him play a little more central against Bamford where he could influence a game. I just felt he, 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 he was on wider. the periphery of the game. Yeah, he, couldn't he, get, he couldn't get involved as much. Well, Doku played on the left. Yeah. The game before that, which, which he was buzzing and was brilliant, mm. I think against Brent, uh, Brent, Br- Brentford, Brentford in the middle, he, yeah. he was on, on the left side coming, coming in. Coming in field, so yeah. Little, he played, and he was a yeah. little quieter. I mean, he was mm. a little quieter. Um, but that's what Pep does, Rob, doesn't he? He changes, yeah. it, he changes yeah. it all around. We do his lineups, we've got no idea, really. The back four, we like, well, yeah, Akanji yeah, probably Kanji, play right. Yeah, yeah. They probably Nathan Ake's left footer would play left back. It's so hard to try and predict their team. Akanji was left, Ake was centre back, and Stones played right mm. back. Um, Mateus Nunes was a little quiet. Yeah, I like yeah, him. New signing from Wolverhampton Wanderers didn't yeah. do a ton. Mm. It was just a quiet. It was a quieter game. Yeah. But again, the big striker is the story. Thank you very much. Two 0 job done. And from Everton's point of view, lived to fight another day. I mean, did what you'd expect. Well set up. Made it difficult at times. Didn't couldn't quite get things going off Calvert Lewin. Couldn't get support up yeah. once or twice. They did nick the ball, didn't they? And had maybe yeah, better did. opportunities where yeah, you, make, you know, picked you the wrong pass, side. didn't? Yeah. Make, make the right thing. And, yeah. and in City, that's going to happen two, three, four times max in a game. You've got to make the most of one yeah. of those. And, and, and we say about Man City being flat, but Everton defended well yeah, to start they with. Defend. They're frustrated. Yeah, they're, they're in good shape. Good shape. Yeah. And what, what I always find fascinating is that Everton concede the first goal and then second half, wasn't it? Yeah, both yeah. of say, yeah. Then, then they, they're 1-0 down mm. and the commentators say, this is, this is better for Everton. <laughs> yeah. This is more football. They yeah. look a lot better yeah. now. Yeah. I'm on you thinking, come, oh, on you come. we know what's happening next yeah. because of that, because yeah. of them coming out and but being... you've got to get a goal. Then, yeah. then the spaces are there. Kevin De Bruyne gets a ball Shame. and the rest is history. So that's how hard it is to play mm. against City, Rob. You, you come out against them a little bit to have a go, yeah. to play, then you're vulnerable if you give the ball away. Absolutely. And you're vulnerable to Erlen Haaland. He punishes yeah. you, 16 Premier League goals of the season. Yep. Appetite back in City motoring it again, Rob, and, and went top of the table only right. for, for a few hours before uh, Liverpool played. And let's go with Liverpool, because yep. it was an historic day at Anfield, that biggest crowd mm. ever at Anfield. Well, six, 75 years, was it, Rob? Yeah, was it ever? in 132-year history, it was the biggest crowd was at it? Anfield, I, wow. I read, wow. which is incredible, yeah, with, with the new uh, city. Anfield in, Road stand Anfield getting Road opened stand up. And it opened, so... Um, it was an Arsenal game. It was a Liverpool game that was in the balance for some time, my friend. And Burnley, I thought, gave a, a decent account of themselves. And it was interesting because we, you know, Rebecca asked us, you know, how do we see the game in Liverpool after the defeat against Arsenal? You know, a few eyes on. Yeah. You know, there was no Allison. He was ill and Gomez. Yeah. Um, obviously, Canate is a red card. So Quanta came in at the back. So it was a very different back line. Robertson Kelleher, yeah. Kelleher in goal. Robertson played. Yeah. Uh, Trent Alexander started at right back. Came off at half time. So. Yeah. It wasn't the perfect day for Jurgen Klopp and his mm. team. And I thought, actually, Jurgen Klopp, I was reading last night while listening, and, and he said a really interesting thing where he said um, he enjoyed that it was, a, it was a fight and a difficult game and that we came through it because sometimes you need those games to get you back on it. And I kind of understood what he meant. Like, sometimes you can win two or three and it's pretty easy and you don't be after the game. I didn't think, I thought Liverpool had to be at it against this Burnley team. I thought they had many awkward moments. Mm. Awkward moments against Burnley's side that... Again, before the game, I'm thinking this should be... I mean, I guess the 3-1 scoreline. Yeah, in the end. In the end, looks like that. Looks but I thought feels. the way that Burnley would come out and play, like just what I said, like yeah. there's going to be on. spaces for Liverpool to go and do damage. Burnley opened up and went toe-to-toe and matched them mm. for, for long, long periods of the game. One of my notes here is like, this, this game's kind of even. Yeah. Kind of even. And then what have you got for Liverpool? You've got... Attacking players that are game changers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Mo Salah's getting closer. I think he's going yeah. to be in training, training this upcoming this week. week. Starting the week um, yeah. But you've still got Jota, mm-hmm. Nunes and Luis Diaz. They all scored goals. Three goals are from those front players. Yeah. There was changes that the manager made off the bench. Yeah. Half the let come on and, and had an impact. Yeah, Trent's um, had a knock, I believe, which they're, they're a little concerned about. It could be a recurrence of a knee, which not great news. Yeah, Bradley, Curtis Jones, Curtis Curtis Jones, Jones popped it, into right back. Yeah. Connor Bradley... I, I, my understanding is that he'll be integrated back into training, I think, over the coming week. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, he's sadly lost yeah, his father so, so, recently yeah. and has been given time to, to have with his family. Um, so whether Conor Bradley will come in and, and, and mm. fill in right back, possibly. Um, but no, Endo was back, wasn't he, from international duty. Yeah. McAllister was in a little bit of a higher position, which 
I don't know. I, I think you get used to playing yeah. what you were playing, and the holding Takes role was just really, really good. And he didn't quite have the influence that we might have expected. So I just wonder if if Alexis McAllister is going to end, end up, up as, being as a yeah, maybe. Yeah, knit maybe, it together a little so bit sharp. Good. He's just so a good on the ball. In, in vision. Mm. Well, you're right. And in, in Burnley, Rob got uh, equalised for half time with the head of the Jota goal. Actually, you know, I have to say James Trafford again, who looks mm. a really Potentially talented goalkeeper. talented goalkeeper, but Robbie keeps coming out for things where he's not strong enough, where he, he misjudges the flight of the ball and gets caught up in traffic. And, you know, I remember Tim saying a couple of weeks ago, he needs to get in the gym and he needs to just start 100%. thinking about, you know, sometimes he hasn't got to come. If you're not going to get there, if you come, you've got to, you know, have a you've physical presence that you can yeah. take a couple of knocks and give a couple of knocks when you do. But yeah. um, And then, Rob, second half, um, when... Liverpool went ahead, uh, Luis Diaz with the goal from Harvey Elliott, who, who had two assists when he came on late, actually won man of the match. Burnley had a couple of sh uh, great chances. David Dato for Fauna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Had, he got in once uh, in behind the back line, uh, hit the goalkeeper, Odebert hit it over the top. Scored. And then Should the second scored. one, when he gets yeah. played through, is where, on loan from Chelsea, that kind of quality, you're thinking, Bend that really in. bends it in. And all of a sudden, they're back in the game at 2 2. It could have been very different. He misses that one. And then Darwin Nunes, who'd had a day where, you know, you're thinking, oh, is it all the work and no, and no end product? Scores yeah. a brilliant goal, by the way. It's a Great beautiful header. header, ball behind him, uses the neck muscles and really gets a good purchase on it to put yeah. it past the goalkeeper. Darwin, I'll get back to Burnley in a second. Yeah. Bob. Darwin Nunes is a player that, I don't know why, I really like him mm. and I really want him to do well because I love his attitude. I love his pace. I love his pressing. I love his the fact that he's a great teammate who yeah. works really hard for the team. Always makes runs in behind, is a nuisance. His finishing often lets him down, let's be honest about it, but that's yeah. a great header. Yeah. It's a great really header. It's going to be good for his yeah. confidence. What's it, is it eight now? He's got eight and seven. Yeah, eight, eight goals, eight, seven eight, assists. Eight, yeah. eight goals, seven assists. Mm. Um, just back to Burnley, right? I just, when I watched Burnley play at Anfield um, and playing expansively as the way they did, yeah. this didn't work out. They lost 3-1. No. But I, I just want to say this about Burnley, and, and maybe before the end of the season, I'll change my view, but my view is this right now. This is such a... New team for Burnley. Mm. Coming into the Premier League, a lot of players left. They couldn't afford to sign some of the lone players they had. Yeah, they've yeah. made many signings. Not huge money, yeah. but they've made many signings. They've got a, uh, three extra lone three players in January. The, yeah, we'll play this weekend. Dutra Fafana yeah. is another example. Yeah. I like Vincent Company. I mm. like the way that he talks mm. about the game, about his players, about his philosophy of, of the match. I like the way he's trying to, to coach this Burnley team. In the Premier League level, it's really hard to be expansive because if you make mistakes or your quality isn't quite there, you give the ball away, you get you whatever yeah. and you can see yeah. goals. That is what's happening. Mm. But but if a club wants a new identity, wants continuity, wants a young, talented, exciting young team with a young, exciting manager, stick with the project. Yeah. Stick yeah. with everything. Yeah. If they go if down, goes down, so be it. And come up better, stronger. Come up better. Keep the team it. together. Yeah. Don't have so many lone players that they have to re replace all the time. And I don't know in any way to be disrespectful, or if that's the right word, but because you're Vincent Company, can you do that? Like, what, himself? Yeah, no, can he, yeah, can he, can he take that stance because he's Vincent Company? If he was Nathan Jones or a lower league player who's got his first shot at Premier League, God, this is my one shot, I've got it. He'd have to be different. Can, does that afford him a little bit the of... The gravitas of his playing career. The gravitas of his playing career and the way he carries himself and the way he's come up out the championship rather than, I don't know, a player who... who I don't know, let's just say Rob Edwards who, who's done a particularly great yeah. job. But if Rob Edwards' things weren't going well, would he have to think, you know, I've just got to stay in here or I'm going to get sacked? I, I would like to think if I'm watching this with somebody else on the sideline yeah. and he spoke well and I like mm. the way... You, I, I'd you, like you'd to think okay I'd to say the same him. thing. Well, could, could you, well, could you say the Paul, Paul Hackenbottom then? It, 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 it's it, Sheffield United. Young coach, bright, mm. you know, did well to get him out. The, the, the... I, I, I don't think I, I've seen the same enjoyment out of watching the team the under him than I'm player, seeing yeah. with Burnley. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. point. I'm, maybe, I'm just, maybe I'm being a snob and I, no, I, I want to see I'm Vincent Company do well. No, I'm just thinking that, and I, and I like that, and, and I just think, you know, Vic, 
I think Vincent Company can do that because of who he's, he's afforded that, where if, he, if they go down, I don't think they'll sack him. And he's a strong enough personality Rob, yeah. to say, you know what, hey, it's okay. I'm going to do we'll it, dust yeah. ourselves off. Correct. We go again. We'll, go again. we'll, we'll yeah. try and be better. We've and all you, learned from And you believe him, by the way, is the other thing about yeah. him. He's very believable, isn't he? Yeah. I, um, I just... I mean, listen, a great, I think there's a great manager in there. I there is. It's, it's just... Point, but, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's an experience. Yeah. Particularly at the and top level and... Do you know what? He's in learned, compared to some as well, he's learning his trade, isn't he? He's learning his trade. He's, he's been down. And he might get relegated. He, yeah. But it's yeah. not blow it all up and, mm. and let's go for some other philosophy, yeah. some other manager and yeah. some other players. Mm. It's okay sometimes. Mm. Like, yeah. the, the money they've made, Rob, on this mm. up Getting and down, up. Yeah. they should have no financial. Yeah. It's not as though they signed a bunch of, like, maybe Forest have. Yeah. They, they, got they, big, they, they've yeah. got young players wherever you look. The lone players, yeah. they're all young. Um, Dutch of is 21 years of age. They've got young players throughout the team. So I and can't imagine they're, they're, the they're thing stretching well, their wage bill. I know the ownership group there and, yeah. and people in charge, and they're patient. They're not silly. They won't make any rash decisions, and they'll back Vincent. So you, 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 right. you'd, you'd confirm that, that even if they go down yeah. and they get the, you know, is, by 10 points, there'll, there'll, be a they'll plan. see what I'm saying? They will um, already have had a plan, these guys, if we go down. They'd, they'd, be think, they'd have had a, cons or a plan for if we stay up and a plan for if we go and, down. And, and it won't be... And it won't be, it it won't be getting rid of the manager and, and blowing this thing okay. up. So it, it'll be about progression. Right. Um, and that gives them a great chance. Yep. Okay, my friend. Oh, just before we move on, I've, got a, I've done my underappreciated performer of the week. Um, yep. And he was a young man who played in Liverpool's defence at, at centre-back. And a ah. defence that was, um, you know, much changed. Mm. Goalkeeper behind them was different, different Kelleher uh, instead of Alisson, who wasn't well. Gomez was, was ill. Robinson came back, was trying to find his feet. Trent was in. Next to Virgil van Dijk, who wasn't in great form, having made a miss. Gerald Quantza, my friend, mm. is a 21, I believe, I think year, year old centre back. Yep. Born in Warrington, which is just outside Liverpool, played through all the England youth um, teams. Is starting to make a mark in the first team when he plays. Played a couple times in Europe. Seen him now in the Premier League. I think he's got what Premier League goal to his name. Uh, is a young man who might save Liverpool 70, 80 million dollars if he continues to grow and learn and wait his time and, 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 and keep improving. He looks like he's got all the things you would want, Rob, for, for a top class centre back. Good size, good pace, mobility, decent on the ball, a uh, bit of presence about him. And he's one of those who. I don't ever see too much drama around him, Rob, or, no. or, or poor decisions. Or, or, or nervy, or, Yeah, nervy like you see some, or... some, you think, oh, you know, he needs a bit. This, he looks like a 26, 27-year-old who's come in the team. And, and you know, uh, I think the, the, the biggest compliment you can give him is he doesn't stand out at all in, in the team, like somebody who you're nursing to, yeah. to get through. They're trying to help him the way through. Yeah. And also, Jurgen Klopp said, Rob, about a week ago, um, when there was so much talk about Conor Bradley and what yeah. a great job he'd done yeah. and the young players the and Curtis Jones and, and Harvey yeah. Elliott. And Klopp said, what about Kwanzaa? Mm. Why, why are you not talking about Kwanzaa? <laughs> yeah. And I think that backs up your point that this guy's really, really talented. Mm. And talk about a academy system at Liverpool. I mean, it's, it's a yeah, bit crazy. It's big, yeah, yeah. The fullback's coming, you know, Trent came through it and then you've got Conor Bradley and, mm. and of course Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones and, and now Gerald Kwanzaa. It's, it's that, interesting. I mean, it saves academy. millions yeah. if you can develop those players. Well, there used to be a thought that academies actually are producing players who end up in the championship. It's hard to produce the quality that's good enough yeah. for a big six team for a player to go in. Yeah. But we've seen it in Bradley. Seen it. We've seen now with Rico Lewis and, and yeah. Bowden's and many, Kwanzaa's many. and... People who are coming into teams through academies who, who are now yeah. top, top draw. I like the shout. Yeah. I like the shout. And, and uh, yeah, people start getting excited about mm. Joe Kwanzaa um, because, you know, and Klopp's very careful. You yeah. Know, it'll be Kanate yeah. in sometimes, yeah. maybe Kwanzaa, maybe Joe Gomez. Mm. But he'll, he'll, he'll slowly develop Get this guy many. that could be mm. the future centre back for many, many seasons at Liverpool. Yeah. Good shout. OK, mate, well, um, let's move on to some other results. Um, mm. We have to go to Tottenham. Well, talk, well New White Lane Stadium. Um, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, uh, late winner for Brennan Johnson. Mm, uh, great goal, wasn't it? Great goal, great beautiful goal, goal. Uh, against the Brighton time team who went 1-0 up through a penalty. Uh, your mate Pascal Gross yep. getting the penalty. Papa Saw with, with a nice smart finish, got them back into the game. And then a beautiful late move through Madison into Richarlison, Richarlison into Sonny back in the team. Sonny, you knew where it was going, mm. and Brennan Johnson... Um, 
didn't over celebrate. Maybe the celebration police had yeah, got in touch with him. Yeah, just trying to be cool. Just trying to be a cool kid. He, he, he was a cool kid. Biggest moment in, in Spurs shirt. And a, and a really dramatic, important late win for Ange and, and, and Tottenham. I I, uh, I I'm loving what I'm loving it really. I, mm. I I mean I enjoy that sort of coach, that sort of football. Asked afterwards, he said that you know often Spurs have been the team that concedes goals late. Yeah. Um, but they scored the goal to win the game here, and I mean you know some people might be frustrated with Ange Postecoglou and the way that he talks afterwards. Yeah. I, I I've seen enough of him now, almost know what he's going to say, and I I love his message. And his message is, whenever he's asked about Rob, you know, a good result, you're back yeah, on form, yeah. you've got players coming back, you're right there in the top four at the moment, how excited are you? And his response is, and will always be, listen, mate, we're just trying to get better every game. Yeah, yeah. So he, 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 he has his stock answer, mm. and I actually like that answer, we're just trying to get better, better. every yeah. game. So at no point will those players feel that we've done it, mm. we've got there, because great result, but we're just trying Challenge to get better it. every yeah. day and every single game. So I, I kind of like that attitude from him. And the team looks good. And yeah. the players are back now. Human Sonny's Son is back, back now. Yeah. Madison's back now. Van yeah. is back now. It's going to be a fascinating kind of chase for the top mm, four top spots. Top four, and, top five, yeah. And it might be five for the Champions mm, League. We'll yeah. find out. It's the whole yeah. blimmin' mm. algorithm of, of which Europe. team's going to get an extra yeah. European yeah. Champions League spot. But England's got a good chance of good doing chance, that. Good chance, yeah, based on... Uh, um, you know, just, just off the top of our heads, Rob, like we've, we've talked the main teams, haven't we? Yeah. Spurs, Villa and Man United mm. look like they're the ones... The three for one. For the three top for the top spot. four. Yeah. <sighs> Spurs well, have a where, chance. Where would you put Spurs, your money on? Right now, I'd put my money on Spurs. So would I. Because I think there's more goals in them. And, and I, think I think they might lose. Better. They might lose a couple, but I think they'll they'll win out more games. And I think they will get better. Yeah. And the best the the the, the players are, are fit now. I mean, I still like Villa today. And Man mm. United are on a run. They're confident right now. So yeah. it's going to be a yeah, fascinating it's be race. A pass, but I, I think because they've got the points, because they've got the spot, I, I would probably go. Tottenham just to, to, to nick yeah. that point and probably Man United to, to nick it in the fifth. Probably just, just ahead. I mean, they're five points behind Villa. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, like, I enjoyed Villa today. Yeah. They were really, really good. Okay. Uh, Luton Town 1, Sheffield United 3. Good win for, yeah. um, for Sheffield United. Interesting, Cameron Archer back in the team, Rob, and looks so much better when he's in the team. Uh, Can't believe why he's been on the bench for a few weeks, unless he's not been 100% fit. Yeah. Not a great day for uh, Rob Edwards. You know, I'm sure mm. his time at home would have won chance, three Rob. points. What a yeah, chance to get the 23 get points. And just get out of that bottom three. So, yeah, disappointment for them. Yeah. First few disappointment in a few weeks. Nottingham Forest 2, Newcastle 3. Really important win for Eddie Howes, man. Two Bruno Guimaraes goals um, coming in against a, a Forest team that... I've threats, Rob, going forward. And actually, we both talked about They're They're the progression with, with, yeah. with Nuno. Yeah, you think a bit more positivity, a bit more belief in these players Absolutely. in possession? Absolutely. They signed these players like hudson Adoy and uh, Langa. Mm. And then Steve Cooper, we, we saw them, but but not all, all the time. I feel like 10 players left, by the way, Forrest. 10 players left, most of them out on loan yeah. in January. Three came in. I think Nuno has said to the ownership, listen, come on, let's trim it a little bit. Please yeah, trim it a little much. bit. Yeah. And I think we're seeing continuity. I think we're seeing uh, Forrest trusted with their football, mm. their attacking football, get on the front foot, which I really, really enjoy. Obviously, the big worry with them is, is the potential points deduction, Rob. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that yeah. if I'm a Forest fan... 21 I'm, points, um, if just they two get, above Velo. I mean, and they get, they get I mean, three, three, three points. Four, five, maybe. And that yeah, is going to be a big problem. That'll yeah. bring them, if there's five points, to bring them right down to 16. So I like the way they're going. I kind of like Nuno as, as a good person for yeah, this club, steady, this yeah. size of club and what they need right now. Uh, um, <clears throat> but yeah, Newcastle United are finding their way back, Robert. I think I said after the game, it's like if there's a power meter, you know, Newcastle United, w w the power down, was right yeah, down was here. Off, yeah. And now like the little bars are filling up and they're almost at full power. There's players to come back, but the rest between games now is normal. Yeah. And they look like they're finding their way back to, to good form. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Wolverhampton won just three, uh, Fulham three, Bournemouth, Bournemouth one. one. Yeah. Uh, two goals, uh, they could over Reed with the first goal and Muniz got a couple for Fulham, uh, Senesi got a nice finish for Bournemouth, but uh, definitely a good day for Fulham and goals coming in. Amanda Broglie has been brought yeah, on loan yes. from Chelsea yeah. and actually sitting on the bench. And apparently the more games he plays, the less the loan fee he's going to be. Oh, but is it? if you're winning games, I'm sure Marcus Silva's pretty happy with do that. You know, do you know, sometimes we do a podcast, Rob, and we, and we get to a club that I'm like, we haven't talked about that yeah. much. And yeah. I feel like we should apologise mm. to Fulham fans because 
Listen, if their games are featured in our main window, yeah, then we get a, we get a good, good look, look at them. them. Yeah. But it's another weekend where... I, I, yeah, we didn't get we to did, see too much yeah, of them. Yeah, they're in windows where other teams so are we playing. we have to give a bigger picture, but the bigger picture is... Yeah. A month or so ago, there was talk about Fulham dropping in it. They now tw got 29 points. No problem. They've got some goals in the team. Yeah. They've got Broyo sitting on the bench. Yeah. They, they they play good football. Marco Silva, you know, is much more settled, and they know what they're doing. And yeah, they're going to be okay, aren't they? They're, they're going to be, be okay. okay. And, and, they, and they deserve more praise yeah, for yeah, for being Fulham Football Club and being comfortable. And against and the Bournemouth team, Rob, they, they're going well. And we've been talking a lot about Bournemouth and Riola and the job he's done. So that's a really good win for Marco yeah. Silva and his, and, and his boys. No, it is. It is. And uh, last game, Wolves v Brentford's a game. We didn't see too much of this one, did we? No, God got the first goal. Ivan Tony gets another goal, for, another him. goal for him. Um, all the talk, Robin, in, 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 that he's going to be leaving this. Someone there was there was talk in the press conference that the manager, Thomas Frank manager had, had, it, had yeah. mentioned it. I mean, I, I think I said to you, like, on the basis that it sounds like he's going, and you would assume he's talked about big six and want to be a big six. He's got a new agent who's talked about that. I okay. mean. Where's the fit, big six? <laughs> I mean, Hoyland scoring goals now. United could have been a possibility. The United, no, no. Okay. Not the right situation. Aston Villa. No, don't no. need him. Okay. Tottenham Hotspur. With Richie scoring goals now. Maybe not a good idea. Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal. So Man City, no. Liverpool, no. Is the other big six team is? Chelsea, right down in 11th. 11th. Place. I, I think Chelsea is the fit is for it, him. Is a fit? I think Chelsea's a is fit for him. Little move across West London. Yeah. How, how much how much you how much well, about having to pay? Remember if, if it's gonna be this summer, yeah. it's in his last year's contract. contract. So with one year left 50, 60, 60, 50, 60. 60 million pounds. And it, it, for me that's a two year proper fit, goes in the team, gives them a threat. Build, you can build off him, Rob, as the ball comes in. You can get service into him. He's got goals. He's got nice, tidy, technical feet. I think he's he could a Chelsea be part type of the... player for yeah. me. And yeah. we've seen Diego Costa. We've seen yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drogba. We've mm. seen aggressive, maverick centre forwards. Yeah. And I think go in there. And, yeah. I, I think he's a good. Now there hasn't been. Has there been a ton of talk about Chelsea? There's been some yeah, talk. Yeah, about, not as much. Maybe not as, as much as, as people, others. As others talk, but mm. um, Arsenal. Arsenal is the other one that, that, that is a possibility. And you've been saying, like, have Jesus. they got the guy? Have they got the he guy? Could, he'll get goals for them. Mm. That does interest me. Yeah, 15 plus goals for, for, for Arsenal, Arsenal. On, on rate with that kind of service. With, with in Martinelli's the ball. goals, with Saka's, Saka's goals, goals, with, with Odegaard's, Odegaard's and goals, Rice. and with the set piece goals. Yeah. That's got to be tempting. Mm. That's got to be tempting if you're Arsenal Football Club. It really has. Well, we'll keep an eye on that yeah, this will. summer, mate. But listen, that's it for this week's podcast. Mm. And as Liverpool remain top of the table, despite a couple of hours at the summit from Manchester City on a weekend when Spurs left it late. Bruno Guimaraes got a brace. Arsenal hammered the hammers. And McTominay got it done for Manchester United. We'll be back next weekend. That's match week 25. With some interesting matchups in a Premier League where every point could be crucial come next May the 19th. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with his two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good, good night. night. Hello, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.